Hi, Dev. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm happy to be here. So today you're going to give a seminar at the university because you're invited with our program, our visitors program. And uh, you're going to talk about how studying vision can help us to understand the brain. Can you tell us more about this? Sure. I, uh, brain scientists in general want to understand how the brain takes in information from the world and uh, operates on it, processes it a into uh, a, a different form of information that it can use. And most parts of the brain, it's very hard to study that because most parts of the brain receive their input from some other part of the brain. And it's hard to know exactly what that input is. So if you could study a part of the brain that was interacting directly with the outside world, then it would be easier to study. And that's why we study the retina in the eye, which is part of the brain mm -hmm. that interacts directly with the visual world. So we can, uh, we can study exactly how the retina, which is a, a network of brain cells, is processing information because we know exactly what the input is that we can we can show it a picture or a movie or whatever we want and so it, that makes it easier to study the kind of information that it's that it's processing wow that's so interesting and we all think about the retina and uh, I, I think that everyone knows about the the light receptors the cones and the rods but you study another cell that is, that is involved in this process and, and it's really important, which is the amacrine cell. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about it? What is this and sure. why it is so important and interesting to study this, this cell? Sure. So I, I think a lot of people imagine the retina being like a, a camera mm -hmm. and, and taking a, a perfect picture of the world and sending it um, to the rest of the brain. That's not exactly how it works. Um, it's more complicated than that. The retina um, has a bunch of cameras operating in parallel. And so uh, one of those will, will send information just about edges of objects. Uh, another one will send information about only about things in the world moving to the left or moving to the right, another channel. And so uh, the amacrine cells are responsible for uh, doing all of the, the maths that the retina needs to do to make those different channels. They take what is a relatively simple signal from the receptor neurons and they, they, um, they combine it in a very complicated way to generate all of these channels that are sent through the optic nerve to the rest of the brain. Wow. So they are like the chip that is connected to the... Yeah. Yes, they are. It's a, it's a very, they're, um, they are very diverse. There are many different kinds of amacrine cells. And we don't really understand yet why we need so many different kinds. But we imagine it's because we have so many of these, of these channels um, showing different versions of the visual world to the rest of the brain. And... What are the, because obviously there are so many diseases that can be uh, understood or studied that are related to the function of the retina. So m most um, retinal visual diseases involve uh, the, the light receptors, the photoreceptor neurons dying. And um, a, a lot of research is going into how to uh, regenerate photoreceptors using, for example, stem cells to, to grow into photoreceptors. The problem is, is that in a patient who has one of these degenerative diseases, when the photoreceptor cells die, the rest of the retina reacts to that and changes. And so the, the, the very precise circuitry that is in a healthy retina changes. And so it might be then that if we are able to grow new photoreceptors, that the rest of the circuit wouldn't work properly. And so um, one of the things that we're very interested in is how to prevent those changes once the photoreceptors start to die, to preserve the circuitry so that it, it could accept new photoreceptors 
um, and, and again, function like a healthy retina. And that is, this is something that, that you and I have talked about, how important it is to understand how the healthy system works to actually get to understand uh, how it fails. That's, that's right. And, and uh, for example, one, one way that, that, that we've been examining for, for preserving the circuitry of, of the retina, understanding how that worked required a lot of understanding how the connections in the retina operate when the circuit is healthy. And, and then we can understand what's going wrong in the disease. Thank you very much, Jeff, for coming here today and for coming to our university. It is a real honor. Thank you. Thank you.